All right, welcome back everybody. Simplifying cube roots, here we come. All right, so we've done some radicals and uh, square roots. Now we're gonna jump up to uh, cube roots. I'm gonna just focus on cube roots today, but they will work, any root will work pretty much the same as the square root or the cube root, all right? So let's see what we got here. Uh, so we have the cube root of 250, all right? Um, square roots, I know a good amount of them off the top of my head. Cube roots, I know a few, not as many, um, but just think about, you know, what is one cubed, um, one, two cubed, eight, right? Two times two times two, three cubed, three times three, nine, nine times three is 27, uh, four cubed, four times four is 16, uh, 16 times four, uh, five cubed, and I got 125, and I'm gonna stop here, ding, 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 right? So 125 looks like it goes in there nice and evenly. So the Q root of 250 can be rewritten as 125 times 2. Alright, so now the cube root of 125 is 5 because 5 times 5 times 5 three times is 125. So the cube root of 125 is 5. So that comes out of the cube root. And I can't take the cube root of 3, so that's going to stay inside the cube root. So 5 cube root of 3, or 5 times cube root of 3. Okay, let's take a look at another one. All right, so a cube root of negative 81. So here's one major difference between the square roots and the cube root. All right, you cannot take the square root of a negative number right now. All right, so right now it'll come up as no solution or uh, something along those lines. Um, but soon in algebra 2, you can take the square root of a, ne a neg negative number and it'll become an imaginary solution. All right, um, that's just imaginary, but we'll leave that for uh, algebra 2 All right, right now. Uh, what you need to know is you can take the cube root of a negative number. So what number times itself is 81? And I don't know, okay, but again, uh, another technique is, so here in the last one, I just wrote down a bunch of them, and I see that, you know, I could use this as well. I can see 3 cubed is 27, and I can say, okay, well, I know that 27 goes into 81. Um, or I could also look at, well, 81 is... Um, negative 9 times 9 is 81. And if I do this again, I get cube root of 81 is negative 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. All right, so I broke this down all the way down to its prime factors. And the cube root is asking, well, as soon as you see three of the same numbers, then that comes out of the cube. So three times three times three, that's three products of the same number. So that comes out as a three. Okay, so the cube root of three, that stays in there. That means I'm left with one number in there. So I'm gonna leave that cube root in there, three. And then I'm gonna talk about the negative sign here, okay? So negative 81, how do you get negative 81 here to become cube root? Well, technically this negative times, I put the negative in front, negative 3, 3, 3, 3, that's negative, but I could also make this, all three of these negative, and this is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is still negative 27 if you want to think about it, and negative 27 times 3 is still equal to negative 81. So, this is actually negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. So negative 3 times the cube root of 3. Uh, another easy way to think about it, anytime you have an odd exponent and you have a negative number, you will come out as a negative, negative number outside the radical sign there. Okay, it's because the if you have a negative 2 times a negative 2 times a negative 2, this is equal to a negative 8. And the cube root of negative 8 is equal to negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. So for negative 81, again we did negative 27, which means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27, and the cube root of negative 3 3 times is negative 3. We were just left over with a 3 inside, which is why I have the cube root of 3 left. Alright, so any odd power or any odd root um, that's when it applied to a negative sign will come out as a negative. Okay? And let's see what we got here. 
the cube root of 384 v to the seventh. All right, so <clears throat> again, I don't know all my perfect cubes, all right, so I don't know if 384 is the perfect cube root. And again, after practice, you might you know you'll start to memorize some, but start you know start to think about. It. So we did the list of one through five. Um, if you do six cubed, you get six times six is thirty-six. Times six is two sixteen. Uh, seven cubed. Uh, seven times seven is forty-nine, and then forty-nine times seven is going to be three forty-three. So that's close. But then if I do eight cubed, eight times eight is sixty-four, and sixty-four times eight is 5, 12. So I definitely went over it. So this is not a perfect number there. Okay, so you're going to start playing with, try to play with some numbers that you know. So 5 cubed is 125. Uh, 216 might go, in, you know, 6 cubed is 216. Um, you know, knowing some factors there. Um, 4 cubed is 64. I would start trying some of these numbers. Can Obviously, 512 doesn't go in there, so no. 343 doesn't go in there evenly, no. 216 is not going to go in there evenly. 125, well, if it doesn't end in 5, doesn't. That's not going to go in there evenly. But maybe 64 will go in there. Now, you know, if you have a calculator, you divide by 64 and see if that goes in there. And it actually does, right? So the cube root of 384 can be broken into 64 times 6, right? And the cube root of 64 is a nice number for us. And now bringing me to my variable, v to the seventh. All right, so I want v to the seventh. I want to break this down for myself as well. But I want to break it down so it's something that is divisible by 3. So the cube root of v to the third power is just v. Right? The cube root of v to the third power is v. The cube root and the 3 will cancel each other. The cube root of v to the sixth power, right, so I'm doubling it, is v squared. Right, there's two, three, two, so it's really, if you want to think about it, it's the cube root of v to the third power squared. Right, so how many v to the third powers do we have in here? We have two of them in here. So I'm going to break this down as v to the sixth times v to the first. Okay, because I can take the cube root of v to the sixth, but I cannot take the cube root of v to the first. So some things, so some of these products are going to be left inside the radical sign. So cube root of 64, cool. Cube, cube root of 64 is 4. That stays outside. Cube root of 6, I can't take. That's going to stay, that's going to remain inside my cube root. The cube root of v to the sixth is v squared, because 3 goes into 6 uh, two times. There's two v cubes in v to the sixth. And v to the first is, uh, I can't take the cube root of that as well either, so that's going to stay inside as well. So then I have 4v squared times the cube root of 6v. All right, so a couple new things going on here, right? We've been used to doing square roots. Now here's a, an example of cube roots with both numbers and variables. Let's take a look at one more with a variable. All right. And you got 875, the uh, cube root of 875, x to the sixth, y to the third. All right, 875 is a big number. It does end in 5, though, so I'm, I'm hoping that 125 uh, goes in there evenly. And 125 actually does go in there evenly, right? If you think about your eighths, um, 7 eighths is 0 0.875, 1 eighth is 0 0.125, so hopefully you make the connection there. Um, but if not, I would jump to the 5, you know, ending in 5, and I would automatically thought, well, 5 cubed is 125, is 125 going there? And it does, right? So 7 times 125 is going to give you 875. All right, and then x to the 6 is a number of say, am I going to break this down to anything? And what I'm going to ask myself, does 3 go into 6 evenly? And it does. So x to the 6 is perfectly fine for me. I'm going to leave that just the way it is for now. And does 3, does 3 go into y to the third evenly? And that does as well. So I'm all prepped and now ready to uh, take the cube root. So cube root of 7, I cannot take. That's going to stay inside. The cube root of 125 is 5. 
the cube root of x to the sixth, right? So I'm just taking six, uh, the exponent six and dividing by three, and I'm going to get x to the second power, and then y cubed to the third power, uh, to the cube root is just going to be y, so that comes out, and then times the cube root of seven, right? Uh, another way to look at these for the exponents, if you have the cube root of x to the sixth power, um, hopefully by this point you've taken a, uh, you recall the lesson where you can write exponents as exponential fractions, and vice versa. So this can be written as x to a fractional exponent. So the root is always the denominator, and the exponent is always going to be the numerator. So this is x to the six thirds power. And if you just take 6 divided by 3, you actually get 2, which is what happens here. All right, same thing as here. The q root of y to the third is y to the 3 halves, 3 thirds power, which is y to the first. All right, but that only works nicely when you have a uh, perfect number going in by 3. But let's look at an example of what happens to, the, for example, the last one we had here was v to the seventh. All right, so I got q root of v to the seventh power, which is equal to v to the, right, so we said the root is the denominator and the exponent is the numerator, and v to the seventh thirds is not such a nice number, so if you want to think about it, it's uh, three goes into seven twice, so it's v to the two and one third power, or uh, v squared with a remainder of one, but that's why that remainder of one is why I have one v left inside my square root, or inside my cube root, excuse me. All right, so a quick little lesson on cube roots, and the same concepts apply with fourth roots and fifth roots, right? Um, look for your, look for numbers that go in there evenly four times or, or so on, and then the exponent, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to break it down to be something divisible by three anymore, I'd want it to break it down to be something divisible by four now. All right. Cube roots. Any questions? Please let me know. Thank you.